So welcome back to art class with Corin Little. In today's class we're going to look at complementary colours and then review what you explored yesterday uh, looking in when you were inventing your tertiary colours. Greys, browns and black. Now what colours make black? Did you, did you figure that out? I know we talked about it in the first class. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. I found some sienna brown. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of that on my palette. Now what makes sienna brown? Can you remember? So sienna brown is made by mixing all the primary colors together. So the three, so it's also a tertiary color. Now when I mix uh, these two, when I mix the cold blue, pathalo blue, with um, burnt umber or sienna brown, I can make the tertiary colour. I haven't rolled up my sleeves. Tut, tut, tut. I need to roll up my sleeves because otherwise I get, um, I'm wearing these special clothes for you today because we're going to be discussing complementary colours. But I need to put on my apron so I don't get my nice clothes dirty because I'm very good at doing that. I can get a really nice tone of black when I mix the brown and the blue together. So that is something that I hope you discovered yesterday um, when you were experimenting with tertiary colour mixing. Let us learn and figure out what makes a complementary pair. Now, if you think about the word complementary, it is made up of the word to complement, to make somebody happy. And complementary pairs make colors happy. And designers, if a designer is creating an advertisement for a billboard on the motorway or on the highway, they'll often use, if they want red letters to show up so that you can read it easily as you're quickly passing by, they'll put just a little edge of green around that letter so it makes it easier for you to read. So, it's, so these pairs make each other sing, okay? Here I have um, red and green. Now, I've put the secondary colours here and I've placed the primary colours here. So what do you notice with this, with the complementary pair red and green? How do you know that it's a complementary pair? That is the question. I can figure this out by knowing, by, by the fact that I've already learned that the secondary colour of green is made from blue and yellow. So, I know that the, the third primary colour is red. So that is the complementary colour to green. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to the blue and orange and as you can see I, I've got the complementary colours blue and orange in my hair and there's a little bit of tonal gradation here which we're going to uh, go into in a minute. So, so again, you know, what what primary colours make orange? If we look at what colours we see in orange, because that's something that we need to start 
uh, doing is really looking at a colour and seeing how it's made, seeing what colours are inside it. So I can see a little bit of red and some yellow in this orange colour. So I know that yellow and red make orange, so blue is the third primary colour, so that is the complementary pair to orange because I can't find blue in this orange. And again, we move to the last complementary pair that I'm wearing for you today in my outfit. I have um, a mauve uh, turtleneck or puller neck, depending on which country we're in, and my yellow and black jacket. So what colours make purple? Let's think about that for the moment. Now what colours do we see in purple? Let's look at this closely. So we can see that there's a bit of blue in here and that there's a bit of red and that's something that you hopefully learnt yesterday in lesson two. So, so uh, blue and red are primary colours, they make purple. So the third primary colour is yellow, so that is a complementary pair to purple. In the task that I would like you to do after this video today, take the primary colours and use the complementary pairs to create that darker tone. Okay? And, you know, if you want to do um, all three, you can create, you know, for those of you who get really excited about uh, doing this exercise, you know, I would recommend you do um, all three. So all three primary colours and all three um, secondary colours and create strips of each. So I'm going to demonstrate how to mix the complementary colours. And let me again roll up my sleeve so I don't get my lovely clothes, outfit dirty that I've worn especially for you today. I'm going to put on my apron and you can also see I've got a skirt that is made out of the complementary colours, the complementary pair of blue and orange which goes very well with this jacket and top. All complementary colours today, all happy and I'm going to uh, work with my hot primary, so I'm going to put cadmium yellow on my palette, cadmium red, and ultramarine blue, which are my three hot primary colours. I've already got black on my palette and I can make some more. And I'm also going to need um, some white. Experiment with uh, fusing from very light, from a very light tone. See, this, this is all green, but each uh, segment of the paper is a different tone, a different value. And uh, that is tone and value is one of the formal elements that we're going to be talking in uh, the class, art classes uh, next week um, in the second course. But today we're just thinking about this tone gradation and we're learning the magic of complementary colours. James Terrell had an installation in the PS1 gallery where he'd cut a square out of the roof of that gallery and we all laid and we got to the, to the museum just before dusk 
and we were able to lie down on the gallery floor and watch the sky turn from white through blue to black. Now that is what I want you to experiment with doing on this uh, sheet of paper today. So quite a big chunk of white and I'm just going to add a tiny drop of blue. Just want a tiny drop and again I'm going to clean my brush so I don't want to uh, make it too dominant and use my rag to clean my brush and I've just created this off this very light tone of of blue here okay so I'm going to put that in my first uh, segment on my sheet okay again loading up my brush with paint so I can get that nice fine edge and the folds really help in these exercises just to let the the hairs of the brush spread out and get into that crack. Really thinking about this slow movement from white through blue to black. In this piece, you know, it's almost like we're dancing through colour. You know, we're, we're moving through the, the different tones that each colour can create. Today we are investigating the complementary pairs and what happens when we mix them together. So I have the complementary pair of blue and orange on my palette. And I'm just going to add a tiny drop of orange to the blue and just see how this and I'm going to clean my brush again because and we're just going to see how this alters the tone you see it's just it's taken out that bright that bright tone I'm just going to add a, a tiny drop more but can you see it's really started to turn that to a much darker uh, tone, almost a grey of blue. So that's a little bit too much. So I'm just going to add a bit more blue there. Now you can see how that's just slightly made um, that tone, that value of blue darker. That is quite a stark jump, so I might want to work more on that. Tomorrow, we're going to be looking at um, artists who have used colour palettes to create compositions. And then the task for tomorrow and in lesson five will be to create your own uh, painting composition uh, using your, um, your discoveries that you've learned this week. So um, enjoy your painting, enjoy your tonal gradations and I look forward to seeing what you've discovered. Okay, thank you.